We're going to hear from our mayor, Nancy McFarlane, again, so let's welcome her back to the stage. Okay, I totally want to do that baton thing. So I'm going to get up with you. Okay, when I first moved to Raleigh in the early 80s, the city's arts and cultural scene was still in its infancy compared to what you see here at SparkCon. This is a picture of the very first art explosion in 1980, which was conceived by the brand new Raleigh Arts Commission. Needless to say, the city has come a long way since then. Notice the lovely Fayetteville Street Mall, for those of you that remember that. And much of what we've seen develop over the last few years is really thanks to the Arts Commission. And we had a, a member here earlier, one of, uh, Brian, no, he's gone. Okay, the original Arts Commission was established in 1977. Official advisory body for the arts to the silly, silly. That was Freudian, wasn't it? The City Council? <laughs> Sorry, the Raleigh Arts Commission was the first municipal arts commission in the entire state of North Carolina. Sorry. <laughs> it serves the, as the leading force to champion the arts in the capital city. Clearly, that is not the 1977 Arts Commission. That is our current <laughs> Arts Commission. <laughs> the Arts Commission's uh, the Art Commission's mission breaks down into 11 alliterative goals to entertain, to educate, to enrich, to embolden, to elevate, to enlighten, to enliven, to engage, enhance, energize, and envision Raleigh's arts and culture community. You know, during my time on uh, I was on the Raleigh City Council for four years, um, on the, uh, have been mayor for two, but during that time I, I've just really enjoyed my time involved with the Arts Commission and I've worked very hard to be a supporter of the arts in Raleigh, especially when we get public art like the Shimmer Wall. And one of the things that absolutely drives me insane is when every, I hear people say, well, let's just get the art donated. You know, because it's great when we build buildings, you know, I all, I mean, I, I love it when pu private citizens step up and fund public art, but you know, when we build a building, nobody asks the construction company, let's donate the bricks and mortar, let's donate the plumbing. <laughs> And the Shimmer Wall is a perfect example of why art should be incorporated from the beginning of the project. That's why in 2009, the City Council established a program which allocates a half percent of Raleigh's capital construction projects for public art. I helped found the Public Arts and Design Board, which uses public input so that all citizens can take pride in our cultural landscape. That was the uh, program's first project at the Buffalo Road Aquatic Center. These projects have functioned as well as form. The Wilders Grove Solid Waste Facility is a LEED Platinum Certified Plant. Raleigh artists and volunteers are working on a community-led project to turn recyclable materials into a beautiful mosaic of sustainability. Some of my other favorite art projects in Raleigh were created right here at SparkCon. In the eight years since SparkCon was founded, it's become a celebrated and a showcase of the Triangle's creativity and culture. But it also brings people in from many other places. I look forward to it every year and to seeing the amazing projects that it inspires. You know, last year, the Before I Die wall debuted uh, on Fayetteville Street and let people anonymously share their lifelong dreams in this world. You know, I loved participating in, in this, especially because it was chalk and it was constantly rotating. And some of the answers made you laugh and some made you cry, but like any good work of art, most of all, it made you think. The city also helps fund events such as Fiesta del Pueblo, which is a family-friendly celebration of Latin American culture, which took place in Moore Square last week. A week earlier, the African American Cultural Festival took over the entire city plaza. It was a showcase of great free music, art, dance, yes, I got up and danced, and fun. 
Another public art project that we help fund is the Sister Cities mural in the International Terminal at RDU. This painting consists of images from all of the Triangle Area's 13 sister cities based around the theme of Sister Cities' international slogan, World Peace, One Friend, One Community at a Time. One of the goals of the Half Percent for Art program is to integrate public art into as many city projects as possible. For the ongoing streetscaping of Hillsborough Street, the city is currently taking submission for art projects that will become a part of the new thoroughfare. The deadline is a month from yesterday, so if anybody has ideas, make sure that you get them in to us. The Arts Commission also partners with Capital Area Transit for the Art on the Move program, which puts local artists' work on the sides of buses. So not only do we get better looking buses and a mobile art gallery, but the program also helps to show the potential advertisers the value of funding public transportation. And speaking of public transportation and transit. Just last week, we announced that Raleigh received a $10 million Tiger grant to turn the Dillon Supply Building into a regional transit hub. But <laughs> thanks to the group beautifying emerging spaces together, we already have a look at the future Union Station. It's just, I'm sorry, it's so weird to see yourself paint up there, but. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so it's taken a long time to get the Union Station project off the ground, longer than we would have liked, but I know that when it is complete, it is going to be one of the most beautiful stations anywhere in the country. And I think it's going to bring many more people um, to the city, and when they come through this entrance, just think about the, the fabulous first impression that it's going to make on people. You know, the city has even partnered with the North Carolina State of College uh, College of Design to place QR codes on the base of public art structures. Simply scan it with your smartphone to learn about the art and the artist. I'll wait if anybody wants to scan that one really quick, but I'm only got till my 20 seconds is up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No. <laughs> okay, good. You know, another way that we try to get the public involved with art is through the Pullen and Sertoma Art Center, where children, youth, and adults can take classes and workshops for any discipline and level of expertise. My family has enjoyed taking a huge variety of classes over the years, and each center also has rotating exhibits, so please check them out if you haven't already. <laughs> And then there's Art Space, which provides a studio environment to emerging and established artists for hands on arts education and exhibitions. Art Space is Raleigh's visual art center for creation and interaction and inspires creativity by engaging the community in the visual arts process. And of course, we cannot forget about the very place that we are sitting and standing, CAM Museum. You know, the city's support for CAM has created jobs. Think about how this whole area has changed, new restaurants, new businesses, continues to draw uh, not only residents, but out of town visitors. I mean, it is a constantly evolving. It really has helped put us on the map. This spectacular. I'm really excited to Joy Spark Con this weekend and look forward to seeing you all around town. I'm so inspired by events like this and hopefully on October 8th I'll get to help do it for two more years. But I've really, um, it's an honor to serve as your mayor and to be involved with, with projects like this and I'm excited to see what we're going to be able to do over the next few years. Thanks so much.